Let's try naming this compound. Okay, so what's the longest chain that you found? How many carbons? Six. Right. So at first, I think you might have started numbering like this. That gives us only five carbons. Then we could try numbering like this. That gives us six carbons, so that seems better. Or we could try numbering like this. Well, that also gives us six carbons. So those are pretty much, those are equivalent to each other. So we could call either this the parent chain or we could call this the parent chain. I, either of these would give us the same name overall. So you can pick whichever one um, you want. The key thing is to try to get the chain with the most number of carbons. So again, there's no rule that says the parent chain has to be completely horizontal. You have to try all the different permutations. But if two permutations give you the same outcome, you can just pick one of those. Now we could number that like this, one, two, three, four, five, six. So here's two different ways to number the parent chain. We could start the numbering over here, or we could start the numbering over here. So which of these is the, is the correct way to number? Yeah, why is this better? Because the, it's a lower number at the... For the substituent, yeah. that's right. Here the substituent would have the number three, and here the substituent is the number four. So not only do you have to try multiple ways of getting the longest chain, but then there's always two different directions you could theoretically number the longest chain. You have to try both of them and ask which of, these, which of those gives you the smallest number for the substituent. So we're going to stick with this. All right, well, let's try giving a name to this compound. Try working that out on paper. Okay, well, it's, it's a hexane. Good. What should you say? Hexyl? No, it would be. Oh, so the hexane is okay. Good. Oh, that's right. Okay. So, because that's the parent group. Right? Right. Okay. Let's go hexane. Let me just find another. One, two, three, two. Uh, ethyl? Good. Six ethyl. Okay, ethyl. And it's on the three. So is it a three ethyl hexane? Perfect. Good. That's right. Very good. Nice. Good. Notice that when you're working out the name, you're generally not going to get the name 100% right the first time. You figure out the pieces of the name. Probably the most logical thing is to start by naming the parent chain, hexane. Then you can name the substituent, and then you can put in the locator. So you want to leave yourself plenty of room so you can have, fit in the whole name. And again, it's good to work with pencils, so if you make a mistake, you can always easily fix that. All right, so this would be 3-ethyl hex, uh, hexane. We use O for the substituent and ane for the parent. All right, the most important thing is not to be lazy and to actually physically number the parent chain. We should always physically write those numbers down. That helps us to avoid a lot of common mistakes. So let's give a name to this compound.
good. Do we need methylhexane? Good. Why did you consider numbering from the right? Mm -hmm. But then that would give us a bigger number for the substituent. So here we should number from the left. 3-methylhexane. 